hello friends this is neeti here again i have come with a very meaningful video to share with you on this special day of yoga as we all know that we are celebrating international yoga day which belongs to indian treasure and being a part and parcel of philosophy i would like to share osho's view on yoga osho was a legend as we all know though i am very happy to celebrate this day but a bit sad too for not understanding the real meaning of it by people involved into so called yoga so here we go once osho has narrated beautifully about what yoga is and what importance it has in his own words yoga means union the science of union meditation is the most supreme phenomenon as far as union with reality is concerned meditation is the god of yoga but yoga has fallen into wrong hands and not only recently for centuries it has been in the wrong hands the original faults must be with the founder patanjali himself patanjali has divided yoga into eight parts his division is clear cut very scientific but he was not really aware of human stupidity he started with the body and that's the right way to start the part of yoga you can say the first part of yoga must be physiological because man lives on the circumference in the body so the work has to start there only then can it reach the mind and when one has gone beyond the mind and beyond the mind then the third meditation happens so according to patanjali the first part belongs to the body but he was not clearly aware that millions of people would remain entangled with the first part hence yoga has become synonymous with yoga postures people standing on their heads and doing all sorts of contortions that has become synonymous with yoga it is not a true yoga it is just the preface the introductory part and the person who thinks that introduction is the whole book is idiotic but patanjali did not warn people if he had warned people it would have been better people like patanjali believe in others intelligence which is not there they trust the trust is immense the trust is as immense as people's stupidity is they respect people's intelligence so he did not warn people but the warning was absolutely necessary don't get entangled in the physiological part it should have been the warning a few people only very few if a hundred people become interested in yoga then only one person will get out of the physiological entanglement and that one person will become entangled in the psychological if a hundred persons are entangled in the psychological then only one person gets out of it and only when you get out of the mind does the real yoga begin the physiological part of yoga will give you great physiological powers it can make you live a really long healthy life but what are you going to do with a long life if you are idiotic instead of being idiotic for 70 years you will be idiotic for 200 years it is not going to help anybody it will be a calamity there was a man called nadir shah one of the most notorious murderous men in the whole history of humanity he invaded india at least 108 times he killed more people in india than anybody else and he had his own ways of torturing he would put the whole town on fire and surround the town with his army so nobody could escape 
and he would enjoy it. This man asked an astrologer because he had heard of his fame. What do you say? What is your advice? Should a man live long, very long, or should one live only the average, 70 years? The astrologer must have been a really wise man. He said, it all depends. If a man like you lives long, it is bad. It is unfortunate. In the first place, a man like you should not be born. And in the second place, if he is born, then he should be immediately died. And in the third place, if he manages to live somehow, then the sooner he dies, the better. Nadisha was very angry. This was the first man who had not bothered about his murderous attitude. This was the first man who had said the truth as it was. Nadisha said, I'll kill you. The astrologer said, that doesn't matter. You can kill me, but I have to tell the truth. The truth is that if men like you do live, they should sleep 24 hours a day and drink as much as they can. Nadisha was so shocked, but the man was so truthful that even Nadisha had to leave him alone. Even he could not gather courage to kill such a man. He felt shaken and he remembered him again and again. What a man! Almost a dragon! He made me tremble. The way he looked at me and the way he said things. I had never expected anybody would have such courage. But he respected the astrologer. Yoga can make a person live long, but what will you do? That physiological part should not be paid so much attention. Yes, a little bit is good to keep physically fit, but just a little bit. Otherwise, it is a vast jungle. One can be lost in its subtleties, in its complexities. The second part is even vaster than the physiological. If you get into it, you can have many psychic powers. You can read people's thoughts. But what is the point? Your own rubbish is so much. What is the point of reading somebody else's rubbish? He is tortured by his rubbish and you are reading his thoughts and you think you are doing something great. The real thing is to get rid of thoughts not to read them. One even has to get rid of one's own thoughts. What is the point of reading other people's thoughts? And what is there? You can stand by the side of the road and you can see a man is walking along and thinking of his dog. So what? If you listen to people's thoughts, what will you find? Somebody is thinking of his cow, somebody is thinking of his buffalo, somebody is thinking of his wife, somebody is thinking of somebody else's wife and you are thinking what they are thinking. Maybe the other person is also a yogi and is reading somebody else's thoughts, then things become very complicated. The physiological part is ordinary, the psychological part is ordinary, both can give power. But power is not the goal of meditation. Power is politics. All kinds of power is politics. And power corrupts. All kinds of power. It corrupts unconditionally and absolutely. It always corrupts. Hence I say the only essential thing, the real core of all religion, of all yoga, of all methods of search is meditation. One should put aside everything non-essential. You can use things as stepping stones, but not more than that. Just like jumping boards, you need not bother too much about them. Your whole concern should be one-pointed. You should move like an arrow towards meditation. Only then, in this small life, with so little time, power and energy available and with so many problems surrounding you, can you hope that the arrow will reach the target? The moment you know something of meditation, not about it, but the very taste of it, a great release comes, a great relief comes. Suddenly 
all tensions disappear anxieties anguishes are found no more even if you want them just for a change you cannot find them i have tried and failed sometimes i try very hard to find some anxiety but i cannot it simply does not work i have tried all possible ways from this side and that side but i come to the same end it doesn't work once you have tested meditation it is impossible for you to be in any misery bliss becomes inevitable a natural showering and it goes on showering like flower showering from the sky osho nirvana now or never